Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up. We've got another review for you today, this time of Chrono Cross, and this was written for us by Asdin over at Grinning Wolf Games. So as always, thank you very much to you, Asdin. Chrono Cross came out on the PlayStation around 22 years ago now in Japan and the US, skipping the European region. Sequel to the renowned classic Chrono Trigger, it became a big hit and was praised for its transition to a 3D environment and for its gameplay mechanics. This remaster includes added quality of life improvements and the Satellaview illustrated text adventure Radical Dreamers, which was created to wrap up some unresolved plotlines from Chrono Trigger. Is this release a radical dream come true, or will you end up cross at the performance? Well thank you to Square Enix for the review code, and now let's find out. The game begins with Surge located in El Nido, a tropical archipelago inhabited by ancient natives, mainland colonists and beings called demihumans. Surge slips into an alternate dimension in which he drowned on the beach 10 years prior and meets the thief Kid. As his adventure proceeds from here, Surge is able to recruit a multitude of allies to his cause. While assisting Kid in a heist at Viper Manor to steal the frozen flame, he learns that 10 years before the present, the universe splits into two dimensions, one in which Surge lived and one in which he perished. The story is interesting enough to capture your attention, especially if you aim to recruit all of the 45 party members, each adding a tiny glimpse into their place in this world. The series has always been renowned for great storytelling and heart-wrenching plot twists, and this one is no different. This RPG will have Surge, the main protagonist, travel around the island, meeting a wide range of people and carrying out side quests. There are 45 characters that can join your party, of which some may require a second playthrough in order to recruit. What set the Chrono games apart from some of their contemporaries was the lack of random battles. Enemies are instead visible and battles are initiated when you come into contact with them. The turn-based battles are carried out via a stamina bar and hit percentage system. The character can choose from weak, medium and strong attacks, each spending more stamina points. The weak attacks for example will have a hit rate of 89% and consume only 1 point of stamina, whereas selecting a strong attack may have a hit rate of 64% and will consume 3 stamina points. Stamina slowly recovers when other characters and enemies perform actions in battle. Items, spells and special attacks are all pulled into its own category known as elements. This seemed slightly confusing at first but after a short while it made sense. Everything including characters, enemies and items are governed by an element. In battle for example the field will have a specific element colour assigned to it. Carrying out elements of the same colour will increase its multiplier, turning the battlefield itself into a magic or item booster as long as it is the same colour. Carrying out a fire spell for example will increase the red element on the field effect icon. Characters with stamina below 1 point must wait a cooldown period and elements require all 7 stamina points. If you use an element at any number less than 7, the character's stamina gauge falls into the negative and the character must wait longer than usual to recover. The battle system is simple but makes the game slightly more strategic. Let's now look at the aforementioned quality of life features which have been added to this remaster. First there is a battle boost which makes you evade all attacks as well as a no enemy encounter button and these have made the game far more accessible which in turn has modernised the title to a degree. There is also the inclusion of a speed up and a slow down button. This was a bonus obtained when completing the game first time round but they have now included it here from the get go. In a game that is over two decades old, being able to speed through some parts made it far more engaging and enjoyable, especially for those like myself who have less time to invest in gaming these days. A slowdown button on the other hand, in a game that does have some frame rate issues and we'll talk about these more in the visuals and performance section, just makes matters a bit worse. Moving on to controls, and whilst they do their job well enough, the user interface is one area that is particularly unintuitive. Simple things like changing the graphic style on the fly or the screen size need you to carry out an instant reset by holding the four shoulder buttons and the plus button simultaneously and changing it in the settings. These are minor issues on the grand scheme of things, but they needlessly remind the player of the age of the product by not including simple features. Chrono Cross is still enjoyable to play to this day, especially if you haven't had the chance to play it before, although certain elements have aged quite a bit and some of the quality of life additions miss more than they hit. 
Still, those who are into their classic turn-based RPGs will enjoy this massively and gameplay scores 16 out of 20. Controls do the job, although the UI could have done with a bit of an overhaul and they also get 16 out of 20. As I alluded to earlier, Chrono Cross can be played with updated visuals which include crisp assets or them in their original pixelated form. The visuals are composed of beautiful photorealistic sceneries which were commonplace at the time made out of colourful paintings. The full motion video cutscenes have been beautifully rendered to run smoother on newer hardware. The character sprites, although still slightly edgy, have had a makeover with both their icons and models being spruced up. Text size and overall menus are legible enough too, both in handheld and docked. The game will allow for the screen size to be toggled, albeit with some limitations. The biggest issue here that needs to be addressed, and I have already mentioned it, and that is the frame rate. At some points of the gameplay, especially in battles, characters and enemies alike tend to miss or skip frame rates constantly, and that's at normal speed. Fast forward in the game's speed mitigates it ever so slightly, albeit at the expense of appreciating the special effects. It's far more disappointing than infuriating considering that this version is a remaster and that they could have at least made sure it ran better. There's no Goldilocks, it's never just right, it's either too shaky or missing a few cues here and there. The soundtrack on the other hand though is as glorious as it ever was, with Chrono Trigger's original composer, Yazunori Misuda, returning to add some great tunes. This is by far one of the best features of the game with catchy instrumental songs playing on the world map, which are inspired by Celtic and Mediterranean music. Sound effects are standard, fulfilling their role, and the whole package is richer for it. Visuals have been cleaned up and certainly retain that PS1 era charm, but the frame rate fluctuates quite wildly at times, and having to change the speeds of the gameplay in order to enjoy it can be akin to switching gears on an old car that's struggling to perform. Sure, you can carry out the journey, but how much you'll enjoy it may come down to personal persistence. Visuals, including performance, get 13 out of 20. Audio is simply sublime, and the soundtrack holds up incredibly well, and it scores 19 out of 20. Chrono Cross costs £15.99 and regional equivalents are on your screen now. The game can be obtained physically from Play Asia, with the Asian version having an English language option. As mentioned, this remaster has a few quality of life improvements, as well as the Radical Dreamers visual novel game, which first released in Japan via the Super Famicom add-on, the Satellaview, in 1996. On the one hand, the game still oozes charm, some of the quality of life features streamline the experience, and Radical Dreamers is now available outside of Japan. However, on the other, there are those technical issues, plus cumbersome and quite archaic user interface systems, which belie the moniker of remaster, and one would have expected more from Square Enix in this regard. If you can persevere through these though, the core gameplay is still a lot of fun, and on balance, value scores 13 out of 20. To conclude, Chrono Cross is one of the heroic granddaddies of turn-based RPGs, which should be experienced by every fan of the genre. If we focus on the gameplay and what it's all about, many will find a satisfying story, gameplay mechanics that made it the classic it is today, and if you add to that the millions of players who did not experience this firsthand due to the game only releasing in Japan and the US, there is so much potential here. With this in mind though, Square Enix would do well to give such classic titles the care and attention they deserve in these remasters. If you can get past the issues mentioned in this review, then use it as a heads up if nothing else, as it is a dream come true to have a game of this calibre on Nintendo's hybrid console, and as mentioned, the gameplay itself is still a joy to play. Hopefully at some point we'll see Chrono Trigger, and if so, let's hope it gets the proper respect it deserves. Chrono Cross gets a switch up score of 77%. Thank you everybody for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed it. Please do remember to leave a like if you did. Another big thank you to Asdin for writing this one for us. Please do check out his channel if you haven't done so already. Link to it will be in the top pinned comment. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming.